is going on here? Um, th this is a guy who is um, sick by all indication. He, he has a withered hand. He's not able to stretch his hand. He's in, he's in bondage. Probably have been like that since he was born. And he's been going to church. He's been going to his local synagogue. And the Pharisees, the leaders of the church, are quite happy with his condition. In comes along Jesus. It is the Sabbath day. And so he asks the whole congregation, particularly the leadership of the synagogue, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath or to kill, to save life? Or to lose it. These people in church kept silent. Jesus was not happy about that. And so he called the man and healed him from his withered hand. He said, Stretch forth your hand. He delivered him from that pain. Now, an interesting thing took place. The Pharisees were opposed to Jesus because of that. Why? Well, they have been overcome with tradition and the things that they are used to. So these guys don't do anything on the Sabbath. They were quite happy for somebody to be in pain, to come to church and go back out with that pain and anguish. And as soon as Jesus brought deliverance, the Pharisees were opposed to that. They went out, plotted how they might destroy him. And this is quite sad that the leadership of the synagogue, there is somebody there in pain with sickness comes to synagogue all the time, comes to church all the time. They were quite happy about his condition. And immediately deliverance came. Immediately the relief of his pain was given to him. They got the arm. They were angry about that. And they went out to plot to destroy Jesus. And I want to tie this in with church growth. I want to tie this in with many of our people who sit in churches up and down this country. There are many people in our churches today who have become like the Pharisees. There are many people in our churches today who have become like the scribes, who are so concerned about tradition and a particular way of doing things. And therefore, when people come to church with anguish, with pain, with struggle, with, you know, all sorts of baggages, we are unaware of those things. And instead of praying for people, instead of helping people to be delivered out of their pain, there are people who are... <laughs> <laughs> concern about how the Bible should be read or how the prayers to be said or how somebody should look how you should even breathe in church and many in our churches today have become like the Pharisees when people come into church or people come into church all the time and they see you you are the first Bible they will read. Are you dull or are you lively? Because that would determine whether they come back or not. Many in our churches today have become like the Pharisees, concerned and keeping the tradition and making the word of God of none effect.
and void. But we are told in scripture that the word of God is powerful, sharper like two-edged sword. And if we believe in that word, we proclaim it and we apply it to ourselves, then deliverance will come. Pain will disappear. If you're in any form of affliction, that will disappear if you hold on to the word of God. But many in our churches, the opposite is the truth. They have made the word of God of none effect and void, rather keeping tradition. And so there are many people in our congregation in pain, in anguish, cry night and day. And when they come to church, instead of deliverance, they don't get that and they go home back with their pain. So we should please be careful of how we are living our Christian life. And when I spoke about church growth, it's about how people perceive us when they come into church. Whether we are lively or not, are we happy that we have Jesus in our lives? And is Jesus really affecting our life, impacting our life, that we are able to affect other people and bring them to Jesus, to faith in Christ? This man was free from his pain. And there were a lot of people in the church who were not happy. And we should be careful about that. People can come to church with all sorts of baggages, in scruffy clothes, but we have to be ready to receive them, whoever they are and whatever state they are in, and proclaim the gospel to them. Pray for them if they need healing, and God will bring healing to them. Let us not be like the Pharisees who opposes good things, who opposes deliverance, but let us be the children of God who wants the good of our neighbor, who wants the healing of our neighbor, who wants, wants deliverance of our neighbor. And when we do that, there is a blessing that comes with that.